In this video, we will be discussing important considerations when conducting anthropometric measurements, as well as how and why you might use these measurements to motivate clients and track their progress. Anthropometric literally means to measure a human. Therefore, anthropometric measurements are used to assess the size, shape, and composition of the human body. We divide these measurements into two categories, body composition and body size. Body composition identifies the relative percentages of fat mass to fat-free mass. With this type of measurement, we are simply trying to identify the difference between fat mass and fat-free mass in the body. On the other hand, body size assesses the dimensions of the human body by looking at the height, weight, and circumference. This is helpful to determine a client's health and fitness status, but does not assess body composition. When beginning an exercise program, we want to take anthropometric measurements since simply knowing a person's weight does not reveal much about their overall condition. During a weight loss program, there are going to be times when the rate or amount of weight loss slows, stops, or even reverses. However, individuals can still be losing fat and gaining lean body mass, so you'll want to be able to identify that difference. As with other assessments, taking these measurements can help to gather baseline information, assess program effectiveness, serve as a motivational tool, identify a client's health risk for excessively high or low levels of body fat, promote a client's understanding of body fat, and monitor changes in body composition. There are a variety of methods for measuring body composition, and some are more accurate than others. However, oftentimes the most accurate methods require expensive equipment and can be invasive or unpleasant to perform. Typically the method that you will see in a gym is a skin fold measurement, which yields fairly accurate results and doesn't require a lot of time or equipment. We will now walk you through a demonstration of a skin fold measurement. Zach will be performing a skin fold measurement on Jesse using a device called a caliper. Make sure to familiarize yourself with the exact site locations as it differs for men and women. This measurement is most accurate if the client is properly hydrated and it is conducted prior to exercise. All measurements are taken on the right side of the body while the client is standing. For women, the Jackson and Pollock three site skin fold locations are as follows. First is the triceps. A vertical skin fold or pinch is taken on the posterior midline of the upper arm, taken halfway between the shoulder and the elbow. Make sure the pinch is maintained while the calipers are positioned perpendicular to the site and on the site location, midway between the top and the base of the fold. Pull the skin and underlying fat simultaneously and firmly away from the underlying muscle tissue. Read the dial, then slowly release the caliper trigger. The second location for females is the thigh. A vertical skin fold taken on the anterior midline of the thigh between the crease of the hip and the proximal border of the patella. The final measuring site is taken at the suprailium. This is a diagonal fold following the natural line of the iliac crest taken immediately superior to the crest of the ilium and in line with the anterior axillary line. Body composition can be determined by adding the three skin fold measurements and plugging the values into the conversion tables. The two most common ways of assessing body size are through the body mass index chart and the waist to hip ratio measurements. Both are easy to administer and little equipment is necessary. The waist to hip ratio determines the distribution of fat on the body. We will now demonstrate how to do the waist to hip measurements. When measuring body circumference, it is important that the tape measure is even and straight and all measurements should be made with a non-elastic yet flexible tape. Individuals should wear thin, 
form-fitting material that allows for accurate measurements. The tape should be snug against the skin surface but not pulled too tightly. Zach will now demonstrate how to locate and measure Jesse's waist. With the client standing, arms at the side, feet together, and abdomen relaxed, a horizontal measure is taken at the narrowest part of the torso. This is usually above the belly button and below the rib cage. To measure the hips, have the subject standing with the feet together, a horizontal measure is taken at the maximal circumference of the buttocks. Measure from the side or sagittal view, starting from the calf and move up to the thigh. It is recommended that you take these measurements in a private setting and inform the client of what you're going to do so they feel at ease and secure. As with any assessment, you should be mindful for whom it is appropriate and any associated advantages or disadvantages. For example, clients affected by overweight or obesity might find the experience of having measurements taken to be unpleasant or even demotivating. And as a health professional, you should be considerate of that. As a health and fitness professional, it is up to you to determine the client's needs and the most appropriate assessments and the best course of action.